Photographer Bruce Giffen, whose work is featured behind me, is documenting the many stories of Detroit's present through pictures. Take a look as he enlightens us on his art. Street photography is typically just grabbing pictures of whatever's happening, and mine's a little more um, controlled than that. And I don't know why. I, I, I guess I don't see in action street shots that way. I see a store or a car or a person. And I honestly don't know with all the thousands of cars on the streets in Detroit and uh, you know parked in the curb and wrecked and messed up houses and messed up buildings and messed up people. I don't know why I picked this one over 999 other ones. I really don't understand, but there's something that attracts me to them and that's what I shoot. This is the street in Delray where I first met Brianna. I was driving around Detroit looking for people to include into my photography. And when I turned onto this street, there were 10 or 12 kids running around making do with what little they had. And the street was full of buildings and houses and just activity everywhere, it was alive. And as you can see, it's empty these days. House, a lot of houses have been burned. And every day, three or four more houses get burned down here. Brianna posed, um, in, a, in some pile of weeds. And it was interesting how the flowers, I noticed later that the flowers on her shirt matched exactly the flowers in the weeds that she was standing and <laughs> posing for me. I think a photographer has to be non-threatening. And I don't think that's something you can do. It's something you either have or you don't have. And I seem to have it. So uh, when I meet people, I have a fairly quick connection with them. I only spend two minutes with them and somehow they trust me and they give me what they want to give me. I don't ask for anything, I don't pose, I take what they give me. And that's, that was just my technique and maybe that's why they look so real is because I'm not bossing them around and trying to make them look like they don't really look. I want them exactly how they look. And I'll use the best of that, I never made anyone look like a jerk. I always put the best of them out there because you know I respect them as much as I respect any human being. <laughs> okay, so there's this guy named Billy Bones and everybody sees him around the street, he's sober. And I think he might have been an executive in a previous life because he's got a red suit with a vest and a hat and a pin and a pocket hanky. And he's got a blue suit and he's got a white suit all these things and they always have a vest and he always dresses like a million bucks Now everything's dirty and it's full of holes but he looks like maybe at one time he had a good job and just couldn't do it anymore and he just walked i was with henry and we were shooting a jungle gym that was covered in a blue tarp uh, people were living in it so we wanted to document that and suddenly i was surrounded by 10 or 12 high school students from the city and normally i engaged them but in this case something was different so I stepped back, opened the car door, and Henry stepped out, and that's the end of the story, because the size of him, they left. They bolted as fast as they could move. So that's as close as I've come to any problem. Ruin porn. And this is Michigan Central Depot, and the two words have become synonymous. Whether, uh, when people come to town to shoot video, or shoot pictures of Detroit, and they talk about ruin porn, this is where they want to go. And they'll hire me and I'll take them around the city, but it always includes the train station. When I first started coming here 25 years ago, the word ruin porn didn't even exist. I used to come here and the, the building was basically empty. There were no fences around it. The doors were blown open and you could walk in and out free will, just whatever you want to do. At the time it was interesting. There were signs, there were baggage carts, uh, there were light fixtures, there was all kinds of stuff in here, and it was really interesting in those days. So around 2001, I started teaching college-level photography. And on Sundays, I'd bring my students into the city uh, to go into the, the train station in the Packard plant, Lee Plaza. Before it sounds romantic to you, though, please be aware that the buildings are dangerous these days because of the scrappers, and there are guards and police at every location, and you will get a ticket with no exceptions, and it's always about $250 or more. This is Squeak. Nine years ago, we were in the train station. It was five degrees. And we started hearing a dog crying. So we went 
followed the sound to an elevator shaft and we found her 15 feet down. And I, who knows how long she'd been down there. So uh, two of my students went down and fished her out. I took her home and she's been with me ever since. She's a little cuckoo from being in an elevator shaft for a couple of weeks, but she's a pretty good dog. I love to exhibit. I love framing. I love preparing. I love submitting. I love delivering to the place. I love the opening night. Sometimes you sell, sometimes you win, and sometimes you don't. I've never really had anything stolen out of my car. I always tell people, if you stick your hand in my car, whatever you get, you can keep. Okay, so, so one of the motivations I have, and it's not really something I set out to do, it just sort of evolved, um, is to show people maybe in the suburbs, north of Eight Mile, that the city um, isn't as dangerous as maybe the media might have us believe. Um, I've been going to the city for 30 years and I've never really experienced any crime. And, I, and I'm not naive, I know there's plenty of crime that happens, but I do believe that it's between people who know each other. Uh, marriage and divorce issues and drug deals gone bad and stuff like that. But I've never seen somebody just casually being raped on the sidewalk or I've never seen someone get shot or anything like that. And everybody comes back and says, yeah, but, I, but that's time this happened. Yeah, of course it does but it's not the whole city. And if I've gone, I go into the worst neighborhoods day and night, anytime I want. I never even think about it anymore. And I've never experienced any crime. So who's right? The person that had their car broken into once or me who's never had anything like that happen.